Next we need to consider the multiplicities. The multiplicities tell you about the number of times one, in, one instance of one class can be associated with instances of another class. I placed multiplicities on this diagram. To read these, first of all, the first multiplicity is the minimum, the second is the maximum. So minimum 1, maximum 1, minimum 0, maximum of many. To read this, you would say that each person in the database owns a minimum of 0 and a maximum of many autos. Each automobile in the database is owned by a minimum of one and maximum of one person. We have four options for multiplicities. The minimum can be zero and the maximum one. The minimum one and maximum one. The minimum zero, the maximum of many. The minimum one and maximum of many. And again, in our example, each person in our database owns a minimum of zero and maximum of many automobiles. Each automobile is owned by a minimum one and maximum of one person. So we have the four options for multiplicities. So let's go back and complete our example. We had persons associated with automobiles. Okay, now we have the association between automobiles and dealers. For each automobile, they could be serviced at one, a minimum of one, and maximum of many dealers. Each dealer could service a minimum of zero, maximum of many automobiles. Okay. Each automobile is licensed in a minimum one, a maximum one state, and each state licenses a minimum of one and maximum of many automobiles. Next, we're going to use our data model to create a database. That involves five steps. First of all, we're going to map classes to tables. Then we're going to map the class attributes to table fields and assign primary keys to those tables. We're going to map the associations to foreign keys. We're going to create any required new tables where we have many-to-many -many relationships. And we're going to implement relationships among tables following the class diagram. So step one is mapping classes to tables. We have our diagram on the left and we have the set of tables on the right. Took the liberty of making up some attributes for each table. So our person class becomes a person table. Our automobile class becomes the automobile table. Our dealers class becomes the dealer table. And our state class becomes the states table. So now we have our four tables and we need to pick a primary key for each table. In this case, I've assigned primary keys for person ID and persons, the auto ID and autos, the dealer ID and dealers, and the state abbreviation to as the primary key of states. Now we need to create a set of foreign keys that would allow us to link our tables together. Okay. The one-to-many associations require foreign keys. A one-to-many association are, are defined by the maximum multiplicity. So persons and autos, the maximum next to persons is one, the maximum next to autos is many, so this is a one-to-many relationship. The rule of thumb is to go toward the many. In other words, we would put person ID, the primary key of persons, as a foreign key in the autos table. Next we have to deal with the many-to-many -many association between automobiles and dealerships. The maximum next to dealers is many, the maximum next to autos is many. In this case, we need to create a new table to allow those two to be linked up. Now I've implemented the many-to-many -many relationship by creating a serviced by table the primary key of this linking table is the combination of the auto ID and dealer ID. And it would sit right between the dealers and the automobile tables to implement that many-to-many -many relationship. This slide also shows you the relationship screen from Access implementing our database. 
So now we have persons linked to automobiles via the person ID foreign key. Automobiles are linked to dealers through the linking table that has a primary key that is made up of both automobile ID and dealer ID. And automobiles are linked to states via the state abbreviation foreign key.